Hey guys, uh, we're going to do a commentary video for Commentary Monday. Uh, I'm going to go over the, the video that I just released uh, on the Supreme Kai of Time versus Bobbity. Uh, the Bobbity leader is pretty interesting. Uh, it has the ability to generate uh, a really pl uh, large relative advantage. Uh, I call this relative advantage when uh, you are able to play a battle card that basically has critical and for cheap and you are also to you're, you're also able to tax your opponent a lot of cards out of their hand because it gets pretty large on the backside. Uh, the backside of Bobby gives Servant to uh, two of your battle cards, I believe. Uh, and then one of the battle cards you choose is typically the uh, the Vegeta Z battle card that has dual attack 20k. And on play, it uh, KOs a, a battle card, ignoring barrier. Uh, so that 20k turns into a 30k critical. Uh, it also gets critical as well. So with the critical ability, you're basically able to uh, pressure your opponent for only two energy because... Uh, the Bobbity leader on the backside reduces the cost of the uh, the Vegeta Z battle card to two, so you're only paying two energy. So it's a really small cost to play uh, a really strong battle card that attacks twice and then, uh, basically crits two damage uh, when it gets to the combo step. Um, so yeah, and if they don't if they don't take the crit damage, then they're they're comboing a lot of cards out of their hand. So we're gonna start the game here. Uh, the Supreme Kai is probably gonna go first. Yeah, it's gonna go first here. So I like to do the Mulligan step here. Uh, so he keeps. So it looks like he doesn't keep the Swift Retaliation Cooler because <clears throat> the game doesn't last very long against Supreme Kai of Time. Um, and he also keeps. Or he does. He takes out the Trunks Cunning. That's all we can see from his hand. Uh, on the black player side. So this card right here is the uh, Majin Buu Energy or the Explosion Human Extinction Wave. Uh, what it does is uh, when you combo it, uh, you're you can choose your leader or your battle card. It gets 15k uh, power for the for the battle, and then you're able to mill the top four cards of your deck. Uh, with Supreme Kai of Time, he plays this because uh, it helps the uh, the leader awaken as quickly as possible. Uh, and then when she does, uh, you get all her backside, her backside abilities and drawing two cards. So that's why he plays that. He mulligan away the uh, the token negate, and the let's see what else he mulligans away. And he uh, he mulligan away the uh, the eight drop or the the double strike uh, go ten, which is kind of weird to me because I figured that you need this in this matchup, but I'm sure he has his reason for doing so. Uh, let's gonna read. We're gonna pull up the card text and see what time or uh, what uh, when he's able to play those cards. So this is the card he mulligan from his hand. It looks like he's able to play this for one energy if you have two or more. Uh, so I don't really see him. Uh, a reason why he would want to mulligan this away. Uh, you can play this on literally on turn two, and you're going first. Uh, also, you have a tr you just have to have a trunk Zeno in play. So I guess uh, since he didn't see his trunk Zeno in his opening hand, it gave him a reason not to uh, to play this out or to keep it in his opening hand. Uh, he does have the overall mobility for six, so that is kind of good uh, for pressuring. Uh, it is a double strike, uh, but maybe he he saw a different double strike in his hand. Uh, I'm not too sure. Yeah, so I'm looking at his hand again, and he does not have the trunks in his hand. I'm not sure what this fifth card is. Yeah, it's, it's a Goku. Uh, so that's probably the reason why he kept, uh, he mulliganed away this card, because he didn't have a trunks in, in play. So he's probably keep, he's trying to get the cards to help him uh, aggress a lot harder. So just to reiterate, uh, he kept the Demigra Unison, the Super Combo, and the Demigra. Uh, the Demir Unison, the, the Super Combo, and the uh, Human Extinction Wave. And on the uh, yellow side, he keeps the he keeps the Vegeta that uh, has the Servant and Double Strike ability. But I'm not too sure what else he kept in his hand. But we can see from after the Mulligan step. So it looks like he draws a second copy of a Demigra Unison uh, after the Mulligan step. So he charges it right away because it doesn't have any value. Uh, he passes his turn over since he cannot attack. Uh, in order to generate advantage, he has to be able to attack. So it looks like he draws into Tyrannical Blow uh, after the Mulligan step because he didn't have it in his opening hand. So he charges the Tyrannical Blow and he attacks with the leader. I figure he attacks with the leader here so that he can be able to, to draw a card and take a life. Uh, but he he doesn't want to take a life because this is an aggro leader. So when you're playing against an aggro leader, time is a valuable resource. And so uh, having more life gives you more time uh, against an aggro deck. So he doesn't take a life, he attacks here and here he combos with the extinction wave. So he doesn't take a life, so he negs one on the attack, which was successful. He mills the four cards, he mills another extinction wave and the goten. 
with the Vegeta. So now he has five things in his drop area. Now he just has to swing once uh, with the Kai leader on the front side to be able to awaken because he only needs eight cards in his uh, warp area. So he draws a turn and it looks like he draws the, uh, the Goku here that allows him to discard it and look for a top five for a Vegeta. So it looks like he draws another uh, unison here, uh, which basically uh, means that he has a, a third unison. Yeah, so he does have a third unison in his hand. So I put it on screen here because some people don't know this ability. Uh, it does have the counter counter ability, which is the prize ability for this uh, 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 this card, uh, to be able to negate a counter step. Uh, and then you're able to uh, discard this card. Look at the top five for a uh, either a black Zeno, a, a black Goku Zeno, or a black Goku or Vegeta Zeno. Um, yeah. So this is a really cool ability. Uh, you're able to search for one of your super combos, but I think you can also search for that uh, Vegeta has critical. Let me see. Yeah, so it looks like you can uh, literally add any cost, uh, Goku Zeno or Vegeta Zeno. So that's really good in that in that, that aspect. Because I'm looking at his top five, he could have searched for the, uh, the Vegeta has critical. So now all he has to do is attack on the front side and burst three, and from here he's able to uh, have eight eight cards in his uh, drop area. And he, I see that he also mills the Thorin the Dark Empire, uh, which is the SS3 that got limited to one. Uh, that card is really good if you play Beyond All Limits, which is the uh, SS4 uh, Son Goku from the GT series. Uh, what it does is when it's played, you get to add a card from your overwhelm or from your warp to your hand that's between the cost of three and seven. Uh, so you typically add the thwarting if you have all the conditions met. So here he attacks for 10k on the front side. He doesn't choose to awaken here, which is uh, interesting to me. Oh, he can't awaken because uh, he needs 8 things in the drop, or the warp area. So over overwhelms here for the Goku. This Goku here has critical. Uh, good, uh, good play on him. So this way, he basically uh, makes it so that it's a form of hand destruction because the, the life doesn't go to his hand and it crits it. It also draws a card to replace itself. Not sure if he plays a, uh, a Vegeta Zeno because he can uh, Union Fusion, but this deck doesn't Union Fusion, so there's no point in using that. So he attacks with the 20k crit, so he basically makes it so that he uh, he would lose a card. And instead of losing a card from the life, he loses a card from hand, so that's really good on him. So he's able to uh, waste a time magic. Pays one energy here to play the Mass Saiyan, which is the uh, one that comes out for one energy if you have, uh, if you warped, or if you basically if you overwhelm for the turn. Uh, Basically, what the card says is, uh, when cards are placed from your drop into the warp, uh, you can play this card for one energy. It also has critical, and it's also able to remove two battle cards temporarily. Uh, it comes back at the end of your opponent's turn. So he attacks and he takes another crit damage here, and he goes down to 6. So the Bobby Leader is able to awaken at turn oh, when you have uh, 5 or less life. So he does have that advantage of him. Let's see if he decides to awaken here. Interesting enough, he chooses not to awaken here uh, on the backside to keep the to keep the overall on board. Uh, if he's on the backside, he could have kept the uh, the critical uh, Goku on board. I'm not sure if that would have been the correct play because when you awaken, you take life until you go down to six, uh, and then from there you would have to crit one life uh, from your life to keep the overall Goku on the board. Um, so, not too sure what that 
would mean in terms of uh, he would have to be afraid of something that he does on his next turn and I can't think of a yellow card that for two energy where you can KO your opponent's uh, battle cards uh, the only thing I can think of is probably um, the dynamic duo but the dynamic duo I think you have to be at three uh, three energy to play him so uh, let's double check here so the dynamic duels right here, uh, what it does is if your opponent has two or more energy, so I guess he was kind of afraid of uh, critting himself because if he crits himself and keeps the Goku on board, uh, I guess he could have played this card and killed the uh, the Goku. So I guess Yellow does have access to something that allows them to basically uh, a form of removal on their side. So I guess that was correct on his part. Okay, so we're going to go back to the game here. So he pays one energy here to play the Vegeta here. This Vegeta here has double strike if you have a, a Sun Goku on play. Otherwise, he's a servant with a 25k. So he basically plays this so that he has a body that he can play. My guess is he's probably going to go after the Black Mass Saiyan here uh, to basically kill it. And he does. And if he wants to combo out of this attack, uh, he has to combo up to uh, 10k out of his hand. And that's not a good, uh, that's not a good use of resource. So he lets it go because he doesn't have any sort of negate. He attacks with the leader on the front side. And here he's able to take uh, free damage because uh, when he awakens he takes he goes down to 6 anyway so there's no point in like uh, preserving the attack here. So he takes the damage and goes down to 7. He draws for turn here and so he draws a super Kamehameha. Um, so by turn three, this is the, the turn where you want to go uh, be aggressive uh, with a black leader because uh, they typically use all their resources in order to get your opponent's uh, life low uh, and also their uh, and also their hand size low. So he has an obstacle here. Um, the obstacle, although, is a servant. Uh, there are cards in this deck that restands his card on your turn, such as Zarbon, uh, that restands him. Uh, but you also can overlord him on the backside of the Bobbity ability uh, to draw an extra card. So we might see him try to take out the the Vegeta here. So it looks like he decides to mill three more cards to fill up his overall. He mills another Go Ten and a Goku, draws into a Secret Identity. So he can awaken here if he wants, and he does. He does have 8. He's able to draw 2 and take life until he has 6. So he goes down to 5. So the unison is most likely to come down here. Uh, the unison basically enables him to overwhelm twice a turn. Uh, so that basically allows him to uh, pressure him. But it looks like he pays the one energy here for the Demigri unison. So his plus up ability allows him to place two black cards from his warp into the drop area. Uh, thus allowing him to do a second overwhelm. And I forget that the keyword is called wormhole. If you want to, uh, if you, it allows you to overwhelm twice a turn. So he returns it right away, so that he is able to fill up his drop. I believe he milled three for his burst ability on the front side, and uh, and then he just returned two. So that's five, uh, unless he comboed something I, that I missed. It looks like he's thinking about doing secret identity. So I might have missed uh, him playing milling a, a six card. Uh, he might have comboed on his uh, opponent's turn, but I can't remember. Let's see. Oh no, he has a belligerent Saiyan. So the belligerent Saiyan, which is the mass Saiyan, that was killed off the uh, the Vegeta swing on uh, on his opponent's side. So he does have six at least. So he's thinking about whether he wants to make Beyond All Limits here or the uh, Secret Identity. The Secret Identity would present uh, both of the. So the Secret Identity is able to remove the the Vegeta off the board. Um, so, and he does keep one energy open here, so he could, uh, he's probably playing around a repost. So it's kind of, uh, he's kind of in a tricky spot. If he plays the secret identity here and he attacks, uh, the repost comes down and that becomes pretty much a threat next turn. Uh, and that's, and he's already used secret identity. But if he plays the uh, Beyond All Go Beyond All Limits Goku here, uh, he can basically fetch the uh, thwarting and then attack with the Secret Identity. And if he reposes here, um, he can basically play the Secret Identity to uh, blow up the uh, the repost 
but this is a four cost it looks like so because it's a four cost he can't remove both the vegeta and the uh the robotic repost so i guess he decides to go for the secret identity yeah and this is free so he's able to remove for free uh with the leader ability he can return back uh three uh, battle cards and then draw him a card and that's her form of uh, drawing a card. Uh, she is able to draw a card by attacking. So he attacks with a secret identity here. And most likely it's going to take it. There's no need to um, attack or combo out of this attack because uh, he has the life points to sustain it. Uh, he should be at 4 life. Let me see. No, he's at 5. So when he overwhelms uh, with the uh, card, he's able to burst one, and that allows him to have a uh, wormhole. So he loses one super combo out of his mill, which is unfortunate for him, because he'll need all the super combo he can get to uh, aggro his opponent down. So because of the wormhole ability, he's probably able to... Uh, uh, he's probably going to play beyond all limits here to get the Gogeta. So it goes down to five life and then returns three. That's also what it does. The critical damp, the critical ability on or skill of your uh, backside of the Supreme Kai, uh, basically makes it so that the overwhelm stay at the end of turn, and it also fills up the drop area, so he's able to overwhelm easier. So he now six again, so he's able to overwhelm. Uh, one off the burst here, and then two off the return two, so that's three, and then uh, three more off the leader skill. So it looks like he gets the thwarting of the Dark Empire back. So uh, here I would have swung with the, I would swing with the uh, the Beyond All Limits first to force out any repost. Uh, there's no need to repost uh, on his side because uh, he can just rest the Unison. The Unison is not going to be a, well, it's not going to be attacking this turn. So what I should have done, what he would have done, uh, was to tap here onto the uh, the Beyond All Limits, and if he doesn't have it, then great, then he can play the thwarting. You want to play the cards one by one because there's cards like, uh, what is it called? Power of the Super Saiyan, which rests as a, a battle card uh, for free. Yeah, so here he decides to commit, uh, basically develop more without attacking with Beyond the Limits. And he attacks with the Thorning first because of the repost. Uh, in the event that he reposts here, uh, he can just uh, warp it because the counterplay happens first, or the counterattack happens first, bringing in the repost, and then the Thorning is auto proc, which will then uh, warp the the repost. So he activates the uh, power of the Super Saiyan, so he gets punished here and he addresses the uh, Beyond All Limits and he takes the damage to go down to 3. So at the, at the very least he was able to do 2 damage here uh, without forcing the Awaken. So he charges the token to gate here. Um, so the way that he can deal with this current board is, this is a really scary board by the way, for yellow. Uh, the way he can deal with this current board is to play the uh, the uh, Trunks Unison that minuses 3 to kill all the things in rest mode. So fortunately for him he was able to draw it. Uh, so he does pay the 3 energy here to uh, play it. And then he can either uh, go after the Unison here or go after the life. So it looks like he goes after the life. So it goes down to four. He draws another Beyond All Limits off the life. And here he can awaken. So he can at least have one energy open. So now he's able to attack for 15. So in order to draw a card, uh, you have to discard a card. So what he does is he discards this card here. Uh, this card plays itself off for free if it's discarded by a Bobbity, evil wizard Bobbity skill. 
I'll have the card on screen. Yeah, so uh, this card is discarded by a leader's card. You play it from the drop. And what it does is when it uh, attacks, uh, you draw one card because... Uh, and he also needs to have the Servant ability. The backside allows him to have the Servant ability. So I imagine on the backside, he's going to grant the Servant ability to the Majin Buu here. Uh, giving it Servant. And then when he attacks, he draws a card. It goes up to 15k. <laughs> He has another ability too. I'm trying to remember. So he has the other ability too, where uh, if you discard a card from your hand, you get to add a six cost or less from the drop. So this a this card is able to recycle a six drop. I don't think he plays that. So he goes out to the unison here with only uh, two markers or three markers. Okay, so he negates. He warps the battle card. Yeah, it takes him down. Um, hmm. This is weird. So this is the Bobby attacked it, and then the Unison attacked. It. So you only had two your markers, yeah. So this card was really good because he was able to uh, board wipe and pretty much uh, free up his board. Draws return here. Now he's able to go to four energy before his opponent does. And so this is another turn of aggression if he has all the uh, the pieces he needs. So because he had the he got the beyond all limits off the life, uh, he's probably gonna reestablish the Gogeta, the SS4 uh, SS3 Gogeta, and he's able to draw off the leader ability because he overwhelmed. I think it's starting back. <clears throat> uh, so just in case uh, there's another card that interacts with the uh, the thwarting, I would probably swing with the uh, Beyond All Limits first. Uh, even though he is a bigger stat, I probably would uh, take the consideration to attack with the uh, thwarting first, but there's no need to. The thwarting first is double strike damage. Uh, he's at three life right now, so I would try to get him down to two first before I attack with the thwarting. I also see that he has a critical Vegeta as well. Uh, in the event that he combos out of this attack, I would uh, overwhelm the uh, the critical Vegeta first. Uh, I mean, the, as a second overwhelm off the uh, the leader. But I see that he loses he lost his Demogra, and without the Demogra, he's on, he has to pay one energy to play out the uh, the Demogra. For those of you guys who don't know, the, the leader is able to bring back the uh, Demogron Unison uh, from the warp or the drop uh, by paying one energy. But you can only do that if you have no uh, Unison. So it looks like he goes to the Thwarting first and uh, he has a Repost for here. Uh, the Repost is pretty good here because uh, if when he swings with Gogeta, he's able to warp it off the play. The question is whether he should warp this or the servant, and I would probably warp the servant because it able is able to generate him advantage. So he activates Super Kamehameha here, uh, and he pays an energy instead of take a life. Uh, as the black player, I would probably have taken the life instead of paying energy here, um, namely because the energy is a very precious resource for aggression, so I would have taken the life instead. So the Super Kamehameha takes out the Repost and the Thwarting the Dark Empire kills the, uh, the Majin Buu here. <clears throat> so he pays one energy here to play the Vegeta for one energy. Uh, it does have the ability to uh, play itself for one energy instead of overwhelming it. And what it does is it can warp battle card and also uh, it makes it so that uh, it has critical for the turn. So I would swing with the Vegeta here and I'm pretty sure he does that because it has critical. And he plays uh, testing the opposition here, or not test, freezes army reinforcement. So it looks like he adds another repost to his hand, and he goes down to two life. So he swings in with the supreme kind of time into the leader. Uh, the leader doesn't draw us a card and swing, but it's another form of attack since he is at two life. Combos here, he activates super combo, basically attacks his hand. He 
draws two. It looks like he draws another belligerent saint here. Uh, he chose not to block with the uh, the token, but he is able to remove the token now that he chooses not to block with it. This uh, the belligerent saint or the mess saint is able to be played for one energy uh, to warp the battle card so that he gets another free swing. So it goes up to 30 here. He combos a uh, four, uh, four case, up uh, to five case. Okay, uh, and before I uh, decide to swing here uh, with the Beyond the Limits, I would play the <coughs> Belligerent Saiyan to warp this card off the off the field <coughs> before attacking. Uh, he milled a super combo earlier, um, so um, and he used one on this swing. So he already has the two other super combos. So in this game, he was able to see all his uh, super combos. However, uh, the reason why I say that is because he is unable to search for the fourth copy if he already used it with the uh, the Goku. <clears throat> so he pays the one energy here for Belligerent, and he can warp the the token gate. And he doesn't, so I guess he forgets that uh, this this saying could have removed this uh, battle card. Uh, this one doesn't specify a cost for what battle card he can remove, so he should he definitely should have done that. Unless it does, let me double check here. Yeah, so I'm looking here. the uh, The battle card doesn't. I mean, it doesn't care about the cost of the battle card. Uh, if it did, it wouldn't be able to warp it. But since it did, um, yeah, he could have warped the battle card. Yeah, so he could have worked Token to get here, so he attacks with the Belligerent, he chooses still not to block, even after the misplay. Uh, so he draws two more, draws into the SCR, unfortunately he doesn't have the energy to play the SCR, so most likely he's going to combo that away, or super combo that to the bottom of the deck. Yeah. Draws two more, and draws into the Trunks. So he's going to swing here for 40 here. So this is 20, uh, 25, 35, 45, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> and since he doesn't have a wormhole, he's not unable to uh, overwhelm again. So most likely it's going to be a pass here. He could choose to crit himself down to 3, uh, but I wouldn't do that because uh, that would get some lower life points and he just wasted 2 of his super combos. So he's out of super combos now. He draws into the Zarbon here. So he, as you can see, even though he was able to use the Trunks Unison to warp uh, to kill his whole board, except the, uh, the Supreme Kai Negate, uh, he's able to re-establish his whole board again with Beyond All Limits, and uh, basically uh, these two came out from his hand, but these the Beyond All Limit got the the Thorin of the Dark Empire. But the funny thing is, uh, he if he had saved that energy uh, instead of uh, using it for Super Kamehameha, uh, he would have played the Demigra uh, off the the uh, the warp or the drop, and then uh, that would that would have granted him a wormhole. And I did see that he had another uh, overwhelm that he could have played. He could have played the uh, the Ravager uh, Vegeta, and basically do another form of damage. I also saw that he had the uh, the Goten uh, Thor in the Dark Empire, which he could have played for uh, for six uh, for six overwhelm. Let's go back here. Yeah, so he does have the overwhelm for six, and I think he had enough to. Oh yeah, he had four cards in his drop area, so the Demigra Unison would have put two back uh, to allow him to have the wormhole and uh, have the double strike ability. Um, yeah, so let's go back to the start of his turn. And it looks like he had uh, a low amount of hand size after uh, all those aggression, anyways. So he quotes goes here to basically hand fix. He bottom decks the tyrannical blow and another extra card I, I imagine to draw two. 
it looks like he draws into a, pot, a pan and a negate, and he keeps the uh, the double strike for one energy, uh, Majin Buu. He does have the required the requirement to play it. He only needs to be at four or less life. So he pays two energy here, and this is the play I was talking about, where he plays uh, this uh, Vegeta for only two energy because the backside of the Bobbity Leader reduces it down to two, and then he's able to have dual, uh, dual attack and then able to KO something and ignoring barrier. Also gets critical. So he's going to give a Servant, now it's a 30k critical. So with those low amount of hand size on the black side, he's most likely going to crit himself. Yeah, he goes down to 3, attacks again for 30. I think he contemplates whether he wants to take it, or combo out of it. It's a tough call. I would probably would have, uh, yeah. I would have I would have taken. Uh, so I wouldn't have taken. I would have taken this damage because it's too much to combo out of. Uh, but for this one, if he decides to attack with the Bobby Leader, I would have uh, comboed out of that one. Uh, I would have taken that damage as well because uh, the the Majin Buu can be played for uh, one energy. Well, instead of comboing out of that one, I would have taken the damage. Um, but it makes sense. I mean, one energy could have played a mirror as well, uh, creator absorbed. So it made sense that he would have comboed that card away. And we kind of have perfect knowledge of what he uh, is playing because we see his hand size, or we see his hand. So he could have played the mirror, creator absorbed, take his off his last life. So this play also uh, makes it so that if he. Uh, it basically, it makes him afraid to attack because he could have token negate uh, with two or less life, or with five or less life. Yeah, so he plays it here and he swings for 30. 30 double. And he comes up to 40. And he's only able to go up to 30. Yeah, so even if he had kept the uh, this combo in his hand and one more card, that would have only given him to 40 exactly, and he would have still lost. So yeah, so it was a good play to combo out the uh, the Goku, uh, even though he doesn't know what he's playing. Um, it was still correct because he could have played Creator Absorbed and uh, take off his last life. So it's a very close game, but there was some misplays on the Supreme Kai of Times part. Uh, the yellow player did everything correctly. Uh, he was able to preserve his life uh, without taking it down with the leader ability. Uh, he basically said, uh, you're going to be taking me down uh, rather than I take myself down. Uh, that's pretty much the strategy on the flip side of an aggro player, is to preserve the, hand, the life as much as possible because this leader is going to go after us. Uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, he also decided to make the Vegeta to basically crit him so that he doesn't get the the free resources off his life because he was a if he didn't do the critical here uh, the 40k would have been comboed out of uh, because those two cards were probably 5ks uh, that could have comboed out of the 40k on the last strike. Yeah, so that's my commentary video for Monday. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll do another one for the next Monday. Uh, yeah, but this is pretty much shows you the play styles that you should adopt when you're playing against aggro. And if you're playing aggro, the styles that you want to adopt is basically to burn out your whole hand to basically kill your opponent as quickly as possible. Uh, but yeah, uh, see you guys on the next one. Peace.